Good morning and Merry Christmas. Um, I hope that your Christmas was great. I hope that it you got to spend some time with family, enjoying yourselves, eating some good food. Um, today, we're going to do things a little bit different. Um, because it's Christmas and we are in the middle of the book of Acts, I wanted to take a break from our regularly regularly scheduled program and go back to a lesson that I did a while ago on Jesus' birth. Why? Because it's Christmas and I think it's worth celebrating. So we are going to take a moment and appreciate the time of the year it is. We're going to appreciate um, Christ coming to earth uh, to save us and we are going to talk about it today. Um, and then next week we will pick back up where we left off. So I invite you to join me as we go through our story time today. We are in our old lesson. So we're in chapter three of our book on the Gospels currently. And the theme of today's lesson is the Son of Man has a humble beginning on earth. This is what we're celebrating today, you guys. I hope that you've had time to think about it and the reason for the season as that is sounds a little cheesy but it's true there is a reason we gather together and celebrate during christmas and today we're going to explore it a bit our scripture comes from luke 2 1 through 38 um so if you're looking at the christmas story and you're wondering where this comes from then you can pick up your bible and look at it yourself um when we're talking about the lesson today, we're talking about how Jesus, who came from heaven in all the glory of heaven, descended to earth with all the messiness of earth. And we celebrate a God who lovingly, lovingly takes our place. Um, the prophecy fulfilled today is when God uses a Roman Empire to in his royal decree to move Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem to fulfill a prophecy of Micah. And Micah's prophecy says, But you, Bethlehem, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. So the pro prophecy fulfilled comes from Micah 5 2. Mm. Our story time today is titled The Birth of Jesus, and I am going to dig right in. I'll stop a few places just to point out some interesting things that maybe you didn't know or helps us understand the story a little better. In due time, Jesus, the King, the Son of Man was born, and Micah's prophecy was fulfilled. But you, Bethlehem, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. This was a prophecy that only a sovereign God could make happen. Caesar Augustus, the Roman Empire emperor, decreed that a census be taken throughout the Roman Empire. Because Mary and Joseph were descendants of David, they had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem to register, even though Mary's baby would soon be born. Over mountainous roads, they traveled until they arrived at Bethlehem. With dust swirling around them, they pushed through the crowded streets. Because of the emperor's decree, Bethlehem had many visitors. Irritated, noisy people were everywhere. No one noticed the weary couple who were looking for a place for their child to be born. I'm going to stop there for a second. Just to say that... The road to Bethlehem is about 2,000 above sea level, so the hill would have been really, really steep, which means that Mary and Joseph, when they got to Bethlehem, would have been very, very tired. That and the fact I wanted to point out that Bethlehem was a very small town, and the Jews had a really huge high regard for hospitality, which meant that they opened their homes for travelers and strangers. But because the city was so packed and it was such a small city that even a city that valued hospitality didn't necessarily have room for Mary and Joseph. 
there was simply no space left. The innkeeper listened to Joseph's desperate pleas for shelter, and having nothing else to offer them, he led them to the stable behind the inn. It was only a dirty cave, full of noisy, smelly animals, but it was private. In this cave, Jesus was born. So I know that we have a tendency of thinking that Jesus was born in a stable with a star above it and then a nice little wood manger with all the straw. Um, that's kind of what our tradition has said. However, the Jesus would have probably been born in a dark, damp cave full of noisy and slightly smelly animals. And the manger may have been a hair cloth that held horse feed. So this was hardly an ideal place for Jesus to be born. Um, it was in a noisy and messy and smelly um, and uncomfortable place that Jesus was born. At night in the fields outside Bethlehem, a band of shepherds were watching their sheep. One moment, their eyes were droopy with sleep. The next, they were blinking from the brightness of an angel-lit sky. Don't be afraid. I bring good news, the angel said. Today, a Savior is born in Bethlehem, who is Christ the Lord. So, the shepherds. I wanted to take a second to talk about the shepherds, too. So, in the fields surrounding Bethlehem, they would have been watching their sheep all year round. Um, sunshine or rain or snow, the shepherds would be there watching over their flocks. However, the shepherds of these flocks were often despised by the people around them. They wandered around as nomads, constantly moving the countryside, looking for new pasture land for their sheep to feed on. Um, and the group were often considered to be unworthy, untrustworthy, and dishonest men. So isn't it interesting, then, that it was to the shepherds that the angels appeared to, to present the amazing news. It wasn't the high, important people of the city. It was, it was shepherds that were often despised that got to see Jesus first. I think that's worth thinking about. Was it true that Christ, the long-awaited Messiah, had been born? Before they could make sense of these words, many angels filled the sky. Their words resounded through the night air. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth to men on whom his favor rests. Jesus was God's son, the king of kings, but he wasn't born in a palace or even an ordinary Jewish house. His birth wasn't announced to King Herod or the priests and rulers of the people. And the angels sent shepherds, one of the most despised groups of people, to welcome him. The shepherds didn't question the angel's message. Leaving their flocks unguarded, they hurried to see the marvel. After visiting Mary and baby Jesus, they praised God and told everyone what they had heard from the angels and had seen with their own eyes. Mary, after the shepherds left, had many things to think about over and over again. In accordance with Jewish law, Joseph and Mary circumcised the newborn baby when he was eight days old and named him Jesus in obedience to the angel Gabriel's command. Of all possible names that the Son of Man could have chosen, he chose Jesus, meaning the Lord saves, a name reminding us of God's grace and deliverance from sin. After 40 days, Joseph and Mary went to the temple in Jerusalem to offer the purification sacrifice and consecrate Jesus, their firstborn son, to the Lord. Since they were a poor family, they brought two pigeons for the sacrifice instead of a more expensive lamb. 
That day, Simeon, a righteous and devout man in Jerusalem, decided to visit the temple. He was just an ordinary man, but the Lord had told him, you won't die before you see the Lord's Christ. When he saw the child Jesus at the temple, he knew that Jesus was the Christ. Cradling the baby in his arms, Simeon praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, I can now die in peace, for I have seen your salvation. This child will be a light to the Gentiles and a glory to your people Israel. To Mary, he said, this child will cause the rising and falling of many people in Israel. He will reveal the thoughts of many hearts. And a sword will pierce your heart too. In these words of praise, Simeon was seeing the fulfillment of prophecies from Isaiah. There was, an also, there was also an 84-year-old woman named Anna who had never left the temple court. She had been married only seven years when her husband died. Every day since then, she had worshipped day and night in the temple, fasting and praying to the Lord. When she saw baby Jesus, she realized through the Holy Spirit that this child was the Messiah who would bring redemption to Israel. She thanked God, and from that time forward, she encouraged the faithful in Jerusalem to look for God's redemption that had come. You can imagine that after all this, Mary had, had even more to think about. Joseph, Mary, and Jesus returned to Bethlehem, and no one in Bethlehem even knew that the king was living among them. So that's this Christmas story, you guys. I love the Christmas story. There's something beautiful about God Almighty coming and choosing to be a small baby so that we could be in relationship. Um, I think it's the coolest thing. Um, and the coming of Jesus as King is good news. And today we're celebrating the good news. We celebrate because Jesus is good news because it solves our biggest problem. Jesus solves our problem of sin and in order to build relationship with us. And that is good news. It's also good news because it fulfills all of the promises that we see in the Old Testament when we read. When we read the Old Testament, God is all continually promising over and over and over that, wait, just a second, someday I will come for you. And today we celebrate God coming to us as, as was promised for hundreds of years previously. But we also rejoice today because through this small baby that was born, that is God, that was born in a stable with smelly animals and was worshipped by some of the people in society that, that were kind of weird, that no one wouldn't have, wa would have wanted to talk to. We celebrate this moment because through this moment, Jesus brought peace not only to the Jews, but he brought salvation to everyone. Um, so, th so this is good news, you guys, and I hope that you take the time during this Christmas season to celebrate and be thankful for the God that we have who is willing to come. And I hope that you have time with family, and I hope you eat some good food, and maybe FaceTime some distant family members. Um, I hope that you celebrate Christmas um, greatly. I hope that you have a great time. I hope that you remember why we celebrate it. Um, well, I next week we are going back to our normally scheduled program. And actually, we're going to be talking about the conversion of Saul to Paul. So you're going to want to tune in to next week when we talk about it. I love this story too. But for now, let us sit and live in this moment of Christ's coming. Merry Christmas, you guys.